Keep it going for Matthew coming to the stage now, Brooklyn. Come on. I'm sitting at the dining room table with my wife, Alicia, my daughter, Clara, and my son, Charlie. Charlie's two years old, and other than his penchants for biting my wife in the ass while she's cooking dinner every night, which is an instinct I can totally respect, he is the sweetest person you will ever meet in your life. His first sentence was, thank you, mama. And when he needs his diaper changed, he shouts out, Poop is here. <laughs> and when I come home at the end of every day, he's the first one at the door, and oftentimes, he's the only one at the door. <laughs> Charlie looks exactly like me. <laughs> and my sweet, angelic son is a little asshole <laughs> when it comes to food. Because we're sitting at the table, and he is throwing meatballs on the floor. And Charlie throws food, he launches food, he has turned food throwing into an art. And it doesn't matter whether it is chocolate cake or Brussels sprouts, he throws it on the floor. And it makes me crazy. And in that regard, he's nothing like me. Because when I grew up, I didn't have enough food as a little kid. I was a free lunch, free breakfast kid who, in a time when you had to raise your hand in class and say, yes, I need a free lunch today. And you learn really early that it's better to be hungry than ashamed. And so you stop raising your hand. And so much of the food that I got as a kid was free. We'd get baskets at Christmas time and turkeys delivered by big men with red cheeks who would pat me on the back and tell me to have a good holiday. We would get the government cheese, which was these slabs the size of cinder blocks. And it wasn't quality cheese, surprisingly. So you couldn't cut it for sandwiches. So my mother would cut big fist-sized chunks and we would gnaw on them like hamsters. <laughs> and I'd go to my friend's house and I would see craft pre-wrapped singles. Cheese so fine that it deserved an individual wrapping for each piece, and like a technological marvel of wrapping because you could remove it from the wrapper and maintain its integrity for the sandwich. And for the longest time, I thought it was the best cheese that money could ever buy. In the summers when there was no free lunch at school, our parents would send us to Colt Park, which was in the city. There was a camp there, but at noon, the truck would come with free lunch. And my parents told us they were like these free food ninjas, like freegans before freegans were freegans. They said, go there, and the truck will come at noon, blend in with the campers, and you can get a free lunch. And they would just drop us there. And the first time I showed up for the truck, I saw the truck right where they told me it was going to be. And I looked at the line at the truck and thought, how am I going to blend in? There were 20 kids. There was not a single white kid in that line. The whole park, there was not a single white kid. I was not going to blend in. And I didn't want to blend in. I didn't want to even get in that line to acknowledge that I needed food because as a kid, the one thing you learn about being hungry is you do not want anyone to know that you are hungry. It is a secret that you keep. And so I'm at my dining room table and Charlie is chucking those meatballs and it's just making me crazy to watch him waste food. And I asked my wife, Alicia, what are we going to do about this? And she says, I'm going to the pediatrician tomorrow. I'll ask the doctor for advice. And so the next night I'm sitting there with Charlie and now it's peas. And he has like defied physics and managed to spread the peas all the way across the house. And I have the only dog in the world that does not eat table scraps. So the food like lands around her and she just looks at it disinterestedly. <laughs> and I look at my wife and I say, what did the doctor say? And she says to me, we have to take the food away from Charlie when he's throwing it. And she says, I know that's really going to be hard for you. And I say, why do you say that? And she says, because I know when you were a little boy that you didn't have enough food. And I know taking that food away from Charlie is going to be tough. And she's right, but I didn't know that she knew. And then she tells me that when she gets up and gets Clara's lunch ready, she opens up what I've packed. And she tells me I've packed too much food every day, more food than any could, could ever eat. And she unpacks the food every day from the lunchbox 
and she hasn't wanted to tell me. And I'm just sitting across this woman and I suddenly understand that she knows me in a way that no one has ever known me before. That she's like gleaned that secret from me that I've never told her. And I'm sitting there and I feel more full than I have ever felt in my life. Thank you. That's Matthew, give it up for him.